Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and I guess uh, happy Halloween. I am not disguised myself. Um, Halloween is not that big a thing here in Mexico. We actually celebrate Day of the Dead. That's a much bigger thing. But I figured why not take this opportunity to record a video for Halloween featuring a spooky Pokemon that I really enjoy using, which is Zork. With its Phantom Transformation ability, you may choose a Stage 1 Pokemon except any Zorak from your discard ball. And if you do, discard this Pokemon on all cards attached to it and put the chosen Pokemon in its place. Therefore, we can get Hisuian Arcanine into play. The main attraction of this deck was a very vulnerable attack doing 10 damage. But if you have no cards in your hand, then this attack does 150 more damage. 160 is a very nice number, 130 HP. We wish it was a little higher but that's all right. And so how are we going to get our hand down to zero cards? We're going to be using Peony as a main attraction of this deck where we discard a hand and we search our deck for up to two trainer cards, reveal them and put them into our hand. We can then grab things like Quick Ball or Level Ball or um, tool cards that we can utilize in order to make sure that we can um, play them down. And then outside of that attacker, we also feature my TNS Hustle Bark, where if this Pokemon, where if your opponent has any Pokemon VMAX in play, this attack costs three colorless less. Therefore, Wild Tackle does 160 damage and you one KO with VMAX. It's really interesting how um, Drapion V has a sort of similar mechanic to my Tiana um, in that sense. And like punishing Dark Week Pokemon, essentially with VMAX, with free attacks, right? So pretty interesting to see. Then we also have Radiant Venusaur, where at the end of your turn, after your attack, you may use this ability and you draw cards until you have four cards in your hand. That means after you've attacked with Hizuya and Arcanine for 160 damage, you get to replay your hand and have access to cards that way. We also have Orangru to save um, cards that we might need before we discard them. And we also have Beaverall to replay our hand and see what else we can draw to find resources. Mana fee for, bench, for bench protection and then finally a copy of Slowbro with the Twilight Inspiration, where you can use this attack only if your opponent has exactly one prize card remaining, and then you take two prize cards, giving you the advantage in single prize matchups. Ball Guy does make an appearance here as well, as you can search your deck for three different item cards that have the word Ball in their name, and obviously searching for Ultra Ball and Quick Ball will allow you to discard a bunch of resources in order to um, get your hand down to zero, which is always our goal. We have his Uyan Heavy Bolt to get something out of the prize cards. Ordinary Rod to recover discarded Pokemon along the way with Beyond your Ultra Balls and whatnot. Um, two copies of Capture Energy to help us with potentially retreating and also setting up in the early game. And two copies of Twin Energy to have access to Slow Bros attack consistently and potentially help us with retreating as well, even though we have Air Balloon and Switch. Two bosses orders, choice built. A lot of utility as well, and so let's jump into this, um, into a ladder for this Halloween Zorak special video. If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it, and it's free. Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailman code when checking out for 5% off. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed product or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website, PokemonCard.io. Right. We're up to a pretty solid start. The only bad thing about this hand um, is that we are losing a lot of resources. Fire Energy and Beaver, what are we playing against? Um, the only bad thing about this is that we went second. That is generally the only bad thing. Okay, well, there's a Radiant Charizard staring at me. Um, all right. So this Evolution Incense will be used to discard a My Tiena. Get that into the discard pile already and establish a, a Bidoof. Uh, which we priced both of the Bidoofs, <laughs> never mind. I mean, I can use Azora to get a Beaverall into play, which doesn't sound bad at all. 
Uh, but my opponent immediately conceded. So, all right, on to the next match. <laughs> all right, my recording button wasn't working. <laughs> we are going second yet again, which is sad. Immediately puts us at a disadvantage right here. Uh, we also have an interesting-ish hand. Probably gonna have to discard the boss's orders here, which it's not a bad thing. It's not ideal either. Um, we'll see. We're up against either Palkia or Kira. The double Palkia start when Kira decks only play two to Palkia probably means it's a pure Palkia Easter deck. All right, double herbal. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and quick pull away the boss here. <laughs> so, like, based on how this hand currently looks, geez, it's not looking great. I need to maximize my potential draw from the hmm. Hmm, so maybe I should have kept that boss actually and discard the twin energy. That would have been better if I needed to maximize a draw off of the Radiant Venusaur here. Hmm. I do have the defensive posture, I guess. Alright, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna capture energy with Zorua, I guess. And I'm gonna establish the Venusaur. And then I'm gonna go ahead and Herbaloon here. Irrelevant this friend and defensive posture. Yes. All right. We went ahead. That might actually be really big, honestly. <laughs> Especially with this uh, really awful draw of the Venusaur. Uh, yeah. We are preventing all damage done to Growlithe so far. So not bad um the mana is also pretty important here um i do have access to the other twin energy so i'm probably just gonna go ahead and attach the twin to the radiant venus so i can play it on my full hand best case scenario would be getting a peony top deck second best case scenario i guess would be an incense ultra ball also works so we have a few out that's for sure to have a few out ish um okay the radiant greninja would actually be a really big problem though if my opponent goes attach retreat evolve into pocket v star power up knockout crowlith and zorua that would actually be really really what did they search with their rita my rider level ball and Brady at Greninja so maybe it's not even in the back of their mind yeah surely they might have had the way to do it Ooh, lost city oh nice that is actually really cool um losing the Hisuian Arcanine though instead of having access to it with Zorak will be a problem though um so much so that that's probably going to be game ending, right? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm going to lose because of the lost city. I have no counter stadiums. Yeah, I think I lose to lost city here. Because then the Arcanine goes to the Lost Zone instead of the Discard Pile. And I can't use Oric to transform into it. I only have access to three Arcanines total. And that's not going to win me any games. Jeez. So not using that boss to prevent that search is actually really bad. And there's a Stadium. Yeah, I think I'm going to lose because of that. My Zork all of a sudden becomes really useless. And I have no counter stadiums. Huh. Yeah. 
I don't see how I can overcome that. I really don't. I only have three Arcanines. They'll all be in the Lost Zone. At best, I will have taken three prizes. I could take a fourth, though. If I could take a fourth prize card, then I can't win. Right? Then I can use Twilight Inspiration. Huh. Alright, so maybe I do have a chance, but 120. It's gonna require, yeah, the choice belts, but it's gonna require like a double choice belt at the onto the Palkia. Huh. Alright. So definitely going to Nope. Oh, I'm gonna lose this anyways. Oh, this really sucks. 190. Yeah, I would have needed both choice belts to be utilized here. I don't think there's a way for me to win. All right, maybe there is, but it's going to require me to... Um, Have my opponent whip here, basically. And grab a level ball to establish Pidoof. Uh, actually, no, I can't grab a Pidoof. So I can grab a Pidoof, but I also need another Growlithe here. All right. No, but I also need a Zora. Oh, this really sucks. And my other choice belt is priced too. Okay. This is really, really awful, actually. I'm gonna give up on the active sword. Hoping against all hope that my opponent just takes the bait and knocks that out. Instead of literally any other Pokemon. Okay. The twin energy, not ideal. Yeah, I've, I've lost this game for sure. I've absolutely lost this game. One sixty. Yeah. So the only way I win this is with a very lucky draw right here. Conserving this to an energy and being able to knock out this Palkia with a fresh Arcanine, then I lose it. Yep, there's the Melanie. Like, clearly, they're not gonna. I wonder who they attack though. Maybe the Manaphy. Yeah, the Manaphy, okay. All right. Okay, very weird spot for sure. I need to try and only have one target for the Greninja at any given point. So it's still winnable. The fact that my opponent didn't target the Choice Belted friend is actually really good. But I also exactly need to top deck something to get <laughs> the Growlithe, basically. Or the Arcanine, rather. I have two chances, thanks to a rank, but... Oof. Can I really tough? So the way I do it is, I hit 190 for the active with a choice belt, then I hit 100 with Zork. Oh, but then I lose my twin energy. And then I can't use Lobro's attack. So actually, there's no way for me to win this. I'm just gonna continue here. There's no humanly possible way for me. All right, I went ahead and modified the list <laughs> to add two Rose Towers. Um, we're up against Palkia again, apparently. So yeah, I definitely felt like 
you need a counter to Lost City for you to even have a chance against any tech that plays one or two copies of Lost City, such as Mew, because they'll be getting rid of your Mighty and as well. That would make you really struggle against that tech. So very important to have counters to Lost City. Very, very key. All right, raw battle VIP pass for my opponent. There's also the third game in a row where I have found the second, which is not very nice. And another game where I will be losing both of my choice spells, which might not be as impactful. All right, we're up against Palkia again. Yeah, when you go first with Palkia and you have a pocket and a battle VIP path in hand, you know it's going to be really hard for you to lose. Not impossible, right? I've definitely managed it a bunch because I'm never playing Palkia ever again at a tournament, but not impossible. Um, all right. So do I want to switch out the Bidoof? That's the question. Can I even switch out the Bidoof? Hmm. I play, I'm definitely playing the Rose Tower here. I need more cards. And I absolutely need... I think I'm going to leave the Beat of the active. So I'm going to boss the Sobble. And then I absolutely need double Growlithe here, I feel. Or Manaphy. Actually, maybe mana feeds better. I have way more chance of finding just another Growlithe or a Zorua. As it stands. Right. That might actually end up hurting me in a way. Um sure. I'll hit real the peony. I do need another Growlithe, a hundred percent. Alright. So what seemed to be not an ideal hand ended up transforming into a very solid one and we get the peony follow-up losing during our rod not ideal but it is what it is not bad yeah. the worst thing that could happen is a play where my opponent knocks out mana fee with lost city play right that would be the worst thing to happen i'm asking why can't i go first <laughs> should be really good that would give me such an advantage right here. All right. So Drizzle. What could they get here? A switching card, like a scoop up net, into evolving, Irida, Palkia V Star Pocket. We're gonna knock out on the Bidu. Depending on what their hand looks like, could just be cross switcher into a cross switcher plus Irida play. I really don't know. Oh, well, there you have it. There you have it. I wouldn't mind. If they knock out the mana fee here without the lost city, because then I can just put it back and repatch it immediately. <laughs> that would be pretty neat. Alright, Palkia and Soldier. Yep. They could go after the Venusaur, yep. That works too. Temple of Sino doesn't really matter here. So my peony not grab the Venusaur, but it can grab Deep. So Okay. <laughs> that also fantastic. Alright. That was a very nice top deck. All right, so seeing that, I'm going to discard the Heavy Ball. 
just establish the Venus ring yet again. And then off of the peony, I'm going to grab double, double incense. Now I'm starting to think maybe Altaria is the way to go instead of um, Eberl. Because right now I'm going to establish Beaverall and I'm not going to be able to use it. Whereas if I had established Altaria and I could put the Altaria at the top of my deck, then, or a supporter at the top of my deck, then I would have guaranteed that supporter in my hand. All right. I'm obviously not going to use Beaverall because then I risk the chance of not being able to attack here, but I will use Venusaur because then I can plan my hand. And all of these cards are playable. A lot of these cards are very playable. <laughs> or most of the time the cards are playable. Now I do have a problem now with the Rose Tower. Because that is my second copy of my stadium. And if I end up having to play that in turn in order to bring my hand down to zero cards. And then my opponent plays a Lost City then I'll be in trouble. I guess I'll have the same win condition as the previous game, in a way. I did get an attack off. So if they play it now, I have the counter. If they don't play it now, then I'll have at least one extra Arcanine to attack with. So it's a win-win, I guess. All right, Bucket and Quick Ball. So they will be establishing the next Palkia, of course. Discarding the mana theme. There's Balkium. Attachment. Yep. So I don't fault my opponent for going after the Venusaur. Uh, me having that quick ball and the Orina rod immediately definitely helped. Um, but they do go after it again, but I'm generally okay with that. Um, I have, don't have a guaranteed Arcanine with my current hand, so I'm just going to go with that. Ball guy. An interesting card to get here. All right. So since they did take a knockout, I can. All right. I want to quick pull away the switch and grab a rank root here. Then I'm going to put back the stadium for now, see what I get, and then I'll decide on if I play the ball guy or not. Okay, I do need to play ball guy, or I could just draw cards with Beaverall. No, that would just immediately discard my thing. So I can grab you too. Um, yeah, you two, and then just Ultra Wall away for another Arcanine. And take the KO that way. All right. So we match the price trade at this point, and then we're looking for an eventual slow bro play here, right? Currently, I can play down my hand to zero cards as long as I don't draw anything um, that is unplayable, or they can just Barney me. So basically, they give me the Venusaur ability anyways. <laughs> All right, there's a slow bro. There's another Herbaloon. There's a peony as well. So I guess there is a universe where I draw cards and then peony. But I also want to thin, you know? I do also want to do that. So, okay. Let me do this. I'm going to quick pull away this low bro. And establish a Zorua here. 
And then I will draw two cards just to get a little bit ahead. Right, I am definitely going to keep this energy back into the deck. Uh, not super happy about losing a Zorua, but that's okay. Um, we'll fail this level ball, and then I'll go ahead and Peony, and I will only grab one Evolution Incense. And that's it. Yeah. Then I'll be able to play that for a Zorg, because I know one Zorua can evolve this one. I would have evolved the wrong one. And then I'll go ahead and attack. All right. So what's going to happen now is my opponent could retreat into another Palkia V-Star, take another prize card, then I would attack. Then they would attack me, take another prize card, be at one prize card, and then I wouldn't be able to win. So if they do that, I'm going to rely on finding my one boss's orders in order to win this game that's not ideal that's what happens because i went sec all right that melanie could make it so that they don't have access to the next alka v star because it wasn't irida they're not using their star oh okay Okay, so they have her candy then? Yeah, this really messes up with the math, so... This is a very good play from my opponent. Absolutely a really good play. And puts me... I mean, I'm in the same position, whether they attack with Italian or with this Palkia. I need to go boss KO this Palkia. All right, so can I find my boss's orders? It's not looking great, that's for sure. Once again, if I had Altaria, this would be a completely different um, situation because I would guarantee the boss's orders. So, um, all right, I need to do what I need to do, which is draw five cards here. One of those has to be the boss, which it is. Unfortunately, though. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, I need this to be Ultra Wall exactly, which it is not. So now I cannot take a knockout here. And that's game. That is absolutely game. The only... If only I had a, yeah, and I had one old so it wasn't happening. <laughs> if I had a, um, and nothing can survive a hit here. Uh, yeah, that's, that's absolutely game over. Well, unless my opponent can't retreat though, that would be whole other story um i'm pretty sure i have another energy right another twin i can't oh but there's a state of oh, the stadium never mind <laughs> the stadium <laughs> okay drizal can they retreat this policy yeah that's the question Oof, not attacking here is really bad. Yeah, they have... Oh, they're just holding the cross switcher, dude. <laughs> they are quite simply holding the card. Because that's how this works. Um, all right, that's gonna be it. So zero wins for this deck. <laughs> um, it's spooky how bad this deck performs. 
I did go second every single time, so I was always at a disadvantage. Um, don't play B-Roll, play Altaria, right? Altaria would have made things way different, because then I could have just guaranteed the boss, changed that with my top deck. Like, I could have gone Altaria, put boss at the top, whatever card I top deck, switch it out with the boss, played the boss, changed the arc to Arcanine, taken a knockout, and then... Um, I'm not so sure what else would have happened. Uh, I guess my opponent going after the Venusaur was very effective for them. In the end, um, it did end up making a difference. And yeah, that will be it for the Halloween special. Um, three bad losses right here. Um, if I'd gone first, we would have had a little an extra turn to be able to pull this off. Um, my opponent holding the perfect cards both on turn one, turn two, and this last turn. <laughs> it's really awful. Um, to see that when you're struggling to set up or you're struggling to find the right cards, but it happens, right? Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye.